at some point, uh, they lost me. Um, I woke up some days later, a couple of days later, and the first thing I remember is the team of doctors standing around me and asking me if I knew what year it was. Wait, when you say they lost you, can you clarify what that means? Yeah, I, I, I died. I died. Um, and the next thing, I, it, it was some days later, I remember, uh, I remember waking up in ICU and the doctor asking me if I remember what year it was. I'm sorry, not what day, if I knew what year it was. Going into the hospital, I'd actually had COVID for over a week, but my conditions were progressing um, in the wrong direction from home. And um, we're, we're jumping all the way in. So uh, I had it. Um, my husband did not have it. He was taking care of me at home, um, speaking with my primary care physician, giving me breathing treatments, um, giving me my medicine every four hours. He was in constant communication with her. And uh, eventually he ended up testing positive um, within a week after I got it and just prior to me going into the hospital. Um, she could see, she was seeing me every day on FaceTime and walking him through administering meds. And um, when it got to a point, my temperature had raised right to about 103 and my breathing was extremely shallow. And so um, he called the ambulance. And so I had to go to the hospital. So I was discharged. The hospital needed beds. I was able to go home and <clears throat> go home with oxygen. Uh, excuse me. <clears throat> and go home with oxygen and have home health aides come check on me throughout the week, which is what happened for a period of four weeks after being released from the hospital. So people were definitely seeing me. The people that could actually say something are not allowed to because of HIPAA law. But I was being seen several times a week by home health aides after being released. Um, on oxygen. And I, I actually just got my first clean COVID test probably exactly a week ago. So I have what is called long COVID. Um, and I am facing a very uphill battle um, right now. So I don't want to cry. I have a lot of rehabbing to do. Um, I suffered a lot of internal damage. And so I have a lot of rehabbing to do before I am able to be what I like to call concert again. And um, following the year I've had losing so many people, um, I had just lost my grandmother before I was diagnosed. And um, I just need, I feel like the only way I can focus on me is to actually focus on me. There were people, I don't know how, fans or whoever they were coming to my house, people ringing the bell, leaving things at my doorstep, disturbing my neighbors all times of the day and night. I've had that happen. It got to the point, and this wasn't months ago. I literally just left my, left my house maybe a week ago because I couldn't rest there. My doorbell was being rung all hours of the day and night. Um, I turned off everything. I wasn't on social media. It hasn't been two months since I've seen my sister. It's been a year. I haven't been in the same room with her since my mother's funeral. Prior to that, we hadn't seen each other all pandemic long. That's not new for us. It's not new for us. We've been strained for a very long time. I was never missing. I was never missing. I was in my home. I was being seen by doctors. First and foremost, with two people in the house with COVID, we both had COVID. Um, there was no visiting. There was no visiting the house. We both had active COVID cases. Everyone in my family knew exactly where I was. And I have to say that it's really disappointing that things came to this, but it was not true. And even when it comes to my daughter, I, I feel like she was easily manipulated. She's, people are saying she's a kid. She's not a kid, she's 27 years old. She's my youngest. But in that situation, she was easily manipulated. And to, to, to go along with that, um, she's my baby. And I have never been in danger. I am not in danger right now. I am focusing on putting myself first. It's a work in progress because she actually has to have an in-person interview with a police agency for them to personally look at her and 
and accept that she's okay. So we made arrangements to do that, and that'll take place in the next few days. Once that happens, then she'll come off of the National Registry. Well, I want Kelly to focus on getting through this part of it because of the emotional aspects that she's dealing with, not only from the illness and the residual impact of the illness, but just from the sense of betrayal she's dealing with from her family. I'll deal with the rest of it. There are some conversations that we are going to be having with respect to the fact that this was a false report of a crime. just want to say who was concerned. I want to say thank you for your prayers, for every vigil, for every person. Um, this is a horrible situation. I would never misuse the justice system to push a personal vendetta or agenda that I had with anybody. The devil is a motherfucking liar. So you know I ain't worried, biatch. I don't think I've been more disappointed in the human species than I am now. Okay. Now, let's get this out of the way. I made my jokes about Kelly Price being missing because I knew there was nothing wrong. My joke was, Kelly, you better not be using this time to roll out an album got people worried about you. But here's the thing. And I think a lot of y'all don't understand what it's wrong. What it, it, it means to give someone privacy. Her lawyer, that Kelly has lawyer money to where she can have her lawyer speak on behalf of her. Her lawyer is not going to come out and lie for her and say she's all right, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm pretty sure there's some laws in place where he can't do that. But anyway, the lawyer said that she was all right. Kelly has grown children. Her children are grown. Those are her next to kin. Yeah, you know what I mean? They were fully able and capable of speaking if their mother needed them to speak. But apparently they didn't need to speak. And now everything's haywire. Freeze and salutation, it's your boy Mr. 2000. Um, I'm appalled. I'm not going to lie to y'all, I'm appalled by this whole situation. This is not how I wanted to come back to y'all, but I just had to speak on this shit. Okay, so Kelly Price has been missing. Well, she, let me let me stop saying it. Kelly Price has been absent from the public eye because she had COVID and she was really sick. She, you know, according to her on her interview on TMZ, she actually coded, which means she was gone for a while. She passed away, but they brought her back. Kelly Price vanished and she wanted to heal which is probably fine I, I i know people who do that all the time you know when they get sick or if something's wrong they just disappear and there's nothing wrong with that people do that all the time you know you don't want people in your business you don't want people knowing what's going on so you just kind of shut off and that's cool that's your right as an american to do that you got the money you got the you know the, the means Go disappear, hey yo! I, I I got a vanish for a little bit. I got some shit going on. I, I'll I'll catch you on the flip side. Cool. She she killed her social media. She turned you know everything was cool, but she had her phone on. But her phone started blowing up. And the thing I think the thing that pisses me off the most is that her sister her sister her her sister went on TMZ and saying that Kelly's been missing for two months and. She's saying that, you know, it's a lot of stuff going on. You know, she doesn't know what's going on, and she wants to know her sister's safe. And, and Kelly came on TMZ, and, and she don't know what her sister's talking about. She ain't talked to her sister in two years. So that now she look, her sister looking dumb, because now we're like, wait a minute, what? And, you know, I guess somebody was in her, in her daughter's ear. Her daughter's her youngest. Somebody was in her daughter's ear, had her daughter flipping out and, you know, saying stuff. But Kelly obviously got that taken care of. So that's good. Sometimes you got to do like that. You know, so, you know, you don't even know what's going on. And, you know, you, 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 you know, your kids. Like my, I have a daughter who, you know, if you don't tell her, to give her the instruction, she tends to overreact on certain things, especially when it comes to me. So I have to give her instructions. So if anything happens to me, like I got to a car wreck earlier this year, I had to call her and tell her, honey, I'm okay. I got in a car wreck and you know, don't panic, don't freak out. And I had to break it to her. So sometimes yeah, that just happens. But, um, and like I said, Kelly's sister, she probably just wanted to borrow some money from Kelly and can't get a hold of Kelly. And 
you know, now she's worried. That's what family does when they want something for you. You you don't return their calls and you ain't calling them back. They start worrying when they want something. You know what I'm saying? So Kelly said she ain't talked to her sister since her mom was pregnant like two years ago. And now all of a sudden her sister is worried about it. You know what I'm saying? Going on TMZ. Because wasn't nobody else talking because everybody else knew the assignment. Everyone else knew what to do. You know what I'm saying? But her sister was hyping everything up and and you know, people say, well, Kelly won't let nobody in. When you have COVID, you're supposed to quarantine. You ain't supposed to have a bunch of people around you. That's the whole point of quarantining. That's why I'm I'm really trying to understand the logic of some of these people. Like what what are y'all what are y'all trying to do? What are we trying to do? You know what I'm saying? This is stupid. So now Kelly had to come out. She had to go on TNT, on TMZ, gave an exclusive interview. And she basically was like, yo, I'm fine. I'm trying to recover. I have an uphill battle. I just want peace. And people wouldn't give her her peace. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yo, y'all, we need to do something about this, yo. This reality TV world we live in where everybody has to have answers in real time from these celebrities got to stop. There was a time we could give celebrities her respect, their respect, you know what I'm saying? If they were sick, we, you know, or something was going on, we didn't know. Maybe it's better when we don't know that much about celebrities, when it's, we, we don't peer too much into their lives, because that was something that easily could have been hidden, and nobody knew about nothing, you know what I'm saying? You know, if, if it gets to a point, if it got to a point, thank God, where we need Kelly wasn't gonna make it. Maybe then we need to know Kelly is doing, you know, God, God forbid she's doing bad and we need to start making preparations. That's maybe when we need to know, but really we don't need to know then. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I feel like this. AJ Johnson died earlier this month. We didn't find out till last week. That's how it's done. Chat with Bozeman. The dude had cancer the whole time. Before, like what five years before five six seven years before he died actually died homeboy had cancer didn't nobody know about it till he put that video out where all y'all was making fun of him talking about he like a crackhead when the man was sick going through chemo that's wild boy 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 i don't know what else to say i really ain't got much to say about the whole situation kelly i hope you feel better um you get your ass back on that stage so i can come see you so I can hear you sing my favorite song, Soul of a Woman, because that's my shit. I'm going to go listen to it right now after I get done editing this video. And y'all need to learn to mind some business. Y'all do realize there's a thing, there's one of, the, one of those amendments gives Kelly the right to bear arms and protect herself, right? Why y'all going knocking on her door and leaving shit on her doorstep? That's a damn shame. She can't even... She couldn't even chill at home and get better without y'all ringing her doorbell and coming to her house. Wow. And Tasha K, boy, she full of shit, boy. Tasha K is trash. So, made a whole video about all types of crazy shit with Kelly Price. Saying that she's lying and some other shit. And she got sources. Boy, Tasha K is trash, man. But I'm sure Kelly's going to deal with that on her own time. Um, y'all got to chill, man. Y'all got to chill. But anyway, that's all I got for y'all. Peace out.